Well, this is something slightly different I'm playing around with right now. I don't know if anyone will find it interesting, but what I have here is a, this is a Canon 30D, Canon EOF 30D. And what I've done inside of it is I've gone in and I've tapped off the interface for the lens communication. So I can then put, uh, whoops, USB cable, we're kind of short. I can put a logic analyzer on it. In this case, it's a, um, it's a Chinese knockoff of a USB, though I've actually reflashed it to act like a Salay device. And then what I have here is actually a, um, a, a custom Python script that hooks into the, the, uh, the Salay API, the device API, and actually is a streaming command decoder. So what this does is it, it continually basically monitors the state of the bus, and as stuff happens, you know, like if I, you know, I change the aperture, You can see that, you know, I'm actually pretty confident. So there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here. There's, this is the Canon, kind of the uh, the EOS, you know, whatever they run through here. So that actually ought to be kind of interesting. Whoops. Let's look at the, what the hell? Oh, whoops. I'm lame. So there is it noticing. So one of the things you can see, is, well, it's, oh, uh, whoops, it's certainly not a particularly low energy bus. <laughs> so one of the, the kind of the interesting things is you can see here that I'm trying to segment into packets for each section. And you can see that even if I just push the trigger lightly, it sends kind of a big configuration packet and then just a whole bunch of continuous, the exact same data over and over again. And I'm not entirely certain what's going on. That may be some sort of lens keep alive or something like that. I don't know. Maybe if the lens has image stabilization, that's kind of the continue to image stabilize. So uh, here's the actual script. It's just a very crude state machine. And then what I've done is there's a chap out there who wrote a couple libraries on GitHub called PySale. Uh, oops. Uh, who wrote a, a tool on there to, you know, basically a Python API for it, and I've been kind of horribly abusing that to make it do what I wanted. Mostly because the stuff he wrote is, um, he has this really complicated application that actually does streaming audio decoding using a, a logic device, but there's basically no documentation, and the only example application he provides is this hugely complex thing with a GUI and a whole lot of unneeded stuff. And really, uh, you know, he expects, you know, it's written so that you write bus decoders in Cython. And debugging Cython is just a kind of a, f a clusterfuck of a nightmare. So what I've done is I've just kind of created a very minimal interface that just lets you... So what it does is it, it, it generates, it buffers the Salay device output, which is basically just a stream of bytes, each byte representing the bus state. And then it updates... So, basically what it does is it, it, it continually views all of them and it, it only looks at it when it changes and it takes a timestamp and it puts that in a queue and then there's an API call to pull the latest value out of the queue, um, get oldest event, which returns the, the time and the actual state of the bus and then there's just a lot of, you know, basically bit twiddling. It, it's not quite fast enough to keep up, uh, if you might have noticed, uh, like you can see that you know, it's still generating noise. You know, if I push the shutter a bunch of times, you can see that it just finally got to them. And that's mostly just the fact that it's all done in Python and I haven't really optimized it at all. Uh, the bus on this is kind of interesting. If I sample it, you know, just with the straight up logic analyzer. Let's wait for it to finish sampling. So it's a, it's a three wire bus and that's clock and two data lines there is no chip select. So if we go and we look, what's actually happening is, you know, basically they're just using a period of time, you know, right here, basically this is, uh, uh, that is 0 0.1 milliseconds, 0 0.1130 milliseconds. And what they're doing is basically, as near as I can tell, that's kind of the chip select in this situation, and that's actually what I'm waiting for. So the way my the state machine works is it waits for, you know, it waits for the bus to be high for, you know, there's nine clock cycles per transmission, sort of. You have eight clock cycles which actually carry data, and then there's one more 
cycle where the clock goes low, so I'm just kind of using those to synchronize. So you wait until the ninth clock cycle, you wait until all the lines go high, and then the next falling edge on the clock is your next data byte. Uh, but you can see that it, it, um, it generates a lot of stuff. It's very busy. You know, there's probably a couple K of, of data traffic here fairly easily. So you can also kind of tell from the, uh, the various whiz that these are the, those keep alive packets, which are of, I don't really know what they're doing. And then you have, you know, deeper configuration, you know, commands here. So, you know, eventually, you know, I wouldn't mind being able to basically control the lenses myself rather than need to use, uh, you know, a Canon camera. I wouldn't mind kind of documenting the API and I'll probably throw some of the stuff up somewhere. Um, so what this is, is you can see that it just prints out basically the received and the transmitted byte, you know, because again, it's, an, it's a, an SPI interface, which means it basically hands off one byte per uh, tr bus transaction. But just the cool thing is just the fact that I'm able to do uh, a streaming decoder, you know, all done in Python, you know, and then, you know, oops, I wake the camera up. So right now I'm holding the uh, the depth of field preview, so it's stopping the iris or the um, the aperture down, and you can see that as I hold that it continually generates traffic, but then every time I change the aperture, you know every time I, I change the, you know as I as I adjust the aperture on the camera, it generates a single package for aperture change. So actually, whoops, we can see here that it looks like this. So we have 13 FD, FE. Oh, that's interesting. So 0x2, 0x FE. So I think that it's sending the aperture command as a delta. Because you can see we have, you know, basically a header byte 13 and then a value byte, and then this is 0x90 in all of them. So, so I just went back and forth. So we have 3FD, 3FD, 3FA, FE, 2, 3, 3. Uh, and then I'm not sure what happened here. It got a little sick. Uh, one thing that's kind of interesting is that... Um, the camera interrupts are, it has interrupts, and a lot of the user interface is driven from the interrupts because you can see every now and then there's a big period where the bus is quiescent with, you know, like the clock and stuck in a low state. Let's see if I can't trigger it. Yeah, there we go. So you can see here that we have a period of time right in the middle of a packet where the bus is low for a, uh, you know, a sustained period of time. In this situation, 28 milliseconds. So I think what we're seeing here is the camera's processor internal is probably being uh, preempted by an interrupt handler that's doing something else. You know, here's a much shorter one. Oops. So here's a much shorter period, whereas, you know, and here's the interrupt I was talking about. So I think the camera is being preempted, you know, presumably there's something, you know, like a pseudo RTOSI kind of thing, or at least something that's using a whole bunch of interrupts in there. You know, so the, the interrupts are firing and basically grabbing execution control and then the camera. So obviously, I think what happened in this little segment here, where you can see that I had a packet broken up into two sections, is um, I think the interrupt handler fired and confused my interpreter state machine because I just I literally got it working like three minutes ago. Uh, so yeah, because especially because you see we have Xerox thirteen, Xerox eighty. That's interesting. Eighty ninety zero. Um, it may have not interpreted that right. I don't know. I haven't done a lot of debugging. Um, the sailor stuff is kind of a pain in the ass to debug. Uh, another thing of interest is you can actually see that one of these channels, um, it, I think it's called out as power, but what I can actually do is if I toggle the camera, what it actually shows up as is it appears that uh, this actually controls the iris state, or the, excuse me, the aperture state. So, I'm not entirely certain how that works, because I thought that was the power interface. Um, more interesting stuff to look into. 
uh, it's possible that what they're doing is they have some sort of spring mechanism where a motor holds it open and there's a mechanical stop. But that seems ridiculous. Um, yeah, I actually, you know, just stuff to play with. But anyways, it's just kind of a little example of what I'm doing in my spare time. Um, Uh, now my pack and interpreter are totally crapping its pants. Yeah, well, I have to look into it. <laughs> but hey, interesting.